inflammatory bowel disease inflammatory bowel disease two components like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis depending upon some of the features of the disease as well as the extent of the involvement of the intestine it is divided into these two features and the other features that are associated with it are aphthous ulcers mouth ulcers and um, pyoderma gangliosum ocular features that can lead to the conjunctivitis uveitis and oral candidiasis can also be associated with Abdominal, uh, the people with the uh, usually inflammatory bowel disease present with abdominal cramping, bloody diarrhea, uh, non destructive arthritis, and large joint fusions, and even the ankylosing spondylitis can be associated with it. <coughs> More commonly, conjunctivitis occurs in inflammatory bowel disease, or cicleritis, epicycleritis, peripheral ulcerative keratitis can occur. Uveitis, usually subequitable, chronic, and bilateral. As compared to the other HRA B27 associated, it mostly occurs bilateral and can take a chronic form. Vitritis, retinal and vasculitis are more common in the bronchon as compared to the ulcerative colitis. So, retic arthritis. It is actually the benign arthritis of small joints, usually of the hands, and it is associated with the other skin and the nail lesions. As you can see in the picture, nail lesions, dactylitis, um, <coughs> like Finger joints are usually involved, enthesitis, tendons, inflammation of the tendons, peripheral arthritis, skin lesions that can be of many types, so erratic, but postural psoriasis and axial disease that can lead to the uh, pain backache. Ocular associations more in patients with the psoriatic arthritis as compared to those with the skin lesion and all. If there is arthritis associated with the psoriasis, there are more chances of the ocular involvement as compared to if there are only the skin lesions present. Uveitis can be bilateral or even chronic. Keratitis, dry eye, or conjunctivitis can also be associated with the psoriatic arthritis. Now, when to do the diagnostic testing in the patient with acute interior uveitis? If the patient is having Recurrent interior uveitis in the absence of any other uh, obvious pathology, then we should go for the investigations. If the history is suggestive of spondyloarthropathy, like the patient is having history of back pain, uh, chronic uh, backache, or other joint involvement, the, even then the first episode should be investigated. What can be done to investigate the case? We should go for the careful review of the systems. HLA B27 typing should be done. Rheumatology referral patient should be referred to the rheumatologist for the evaluation of the joints, test x-ray, x-ray of the sacroiliac joint to see the involvement of the joints as uh, there are multiple features present in colloidal spondylitis and on the sacroiliac joint, like osteoporosis, bamboo spine. How to treat the uveitis associated with the HLA-P27 associated diseases? Uh, it depends upon the level of the inflammation. If there is just the interior segment involvement mild, to moderate inflammation, we can go for the topical steroids and cyclopegics alone can solve the problem. However, if there is a more involvement of the, like if the vitreous is involved or posterior segment is involved, we should go for the oral steroids or even the periocular steroids. The root of the steroids depends upon the uh, in level of the inflammation. Systemic steroids in some recurrent cases or if there is systemic involvement, then the systemic steroids can be involved, uh, used. Amino modulated drugs. Methotrexate and azathioprine are also used in some of the cases of the HLA-B27 associated uveitis if it is recurrent and if it is not responding to the topical steroids or if there are many, uh, if there are some complication of the systemic steroids, then we can shift to the amino modulated drugs. What's the prognosis? Actually, the prognosis is controversial. However, some of the studies have shown that it is more severe and more recurrent as compared to the HLA-B27 uveitis. And there are more chances of complication as compared to the acute with the acute interior uveitis.
but if the attacks are bilateral granulomatous or recurrent then we should investigate and uh, in every case of uveitis we ask in the history whether there is a respiratory problem and what we ask joint involvement and skin changes and bowel disease in which bowel disease inflammatory bowel disease which includes Crohn's disease anything else so in the history we ask the patient if there is any problem regarding the symptoms or uh, systems so uh, the joint involvement uh, is in the form of sacroiliitis so the patient complains of lower back pain and radiological features may be there before the patient develops symptoms so x ray sacroiliac joint is indicated in patients who present with unilateral uveitis in recurrent uh, cases uh, immunomodulator therapy imd is usually indicated if there are uh, steroid complications or the patient is unresponsive to steroids or you want to decrease the dose of steroids because of the side effects uh, usually we involve an internal medicine uh, specialist for this uh, job because they are serious side effects so what is the form of uh, periocular steroid in which form uh, how do you get periocular steroid posterior sarcinoma okay so when will you get posterior sarcinoma posterior uveitis there is also posterior uveitis along with that delayed so whenever there is uveitis a delayed uveitis we also see for intermediate and posterior uveitis and we also examine the other eye so if the patient comes with one eye inflammation we have to rule out inflammation of the posterior segment as well as of the other eye okay so how when would you give systemic steroid you see periocular steroids can be given if the inflammation is in one eye if the inflammation is in both eyes then there is another option of systemic steroid so how do you give systemic steroid oral okay 1 uh, mg per kg body weight prednisolone or i i that can also be given okay so what is the indication for uh, intravitreal steroids so there may be uh, long standing uveitis resulting in cystic macular edema so what is the name of intra ocular implant so Fine. So, any comment? So, in all the uveitis cases, we are specially interested to rule out the infectious causes. You see, actually, actually, whenever a patient of uveitis comes, we Uh, suspect HLA B27 related uveitis because this is the most common anterior uveitis. But we also have to consider the differential diagnosis, and in the differential diagnosis comes the infectious uveitis. So we always ask the patient for cuff hemoptysis to uh, rule out tuberculosis, which is the most common cause in our country. sarcoidosis 
and uh, any other cause of uh, treatable infectious rubiitis? Syphilis. Lyme. Lyme disease. So these are the causes we, which we should always try to rule out because the treatment would not be successful if we do not treat the infection. It would remain there. If the infection is not there, then the uveitis is treatable with the skin. 